Explosions have killed dozens in Pakistan. The first blast struck a religious procession in the country's southwest, killing at least 52 people. Some relief for European consumers as inflation dropped 0.9 points to 4.3 percent in September. Opposition leader Alberto Núñez Feijóo's hopes of forming a government in Spain are receding after he lost a second parliamentary vote. The scene of a fatal bombing near a mosque in Pakistan. One of at least two attacks today. At least 58 people died in the blast in Mastung in the Balochistan province, which took place during a rally on Friday to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, marked by Muslims around the world. And at least five people have been reported killed in an explosion at a mosque in Hangu, the third largest city. No one has claimed responsibility yet for the blasts. Some relief for European consumers counting their pennies as inflation dropped 0.9 points to 4.3 percent in September. And the increase in food prices slowed down considerably. However, this was offset by an acceleration in energy prices which prevented inflation from falling more sharply. The September figure is a long way from the European Central Bank's 2% target. But economists believe that if the trend is maintained, the ECB won't need to raise interest rates any further from the already record highs. High prices are holding back the European economy because paychecks don't go as far as they used to, forcing people to cut back on spending. Sí. Spanish opposition leader Alberto Núñez Feijó has lost a second vote in Parliament on his candidacy for head of government. 173 deputies voted for Feijó, 177 against him. Unlike the first vote, a simple majority would have sufficed this time. It was a defeat he'd anticipated before the vote. Si como parece esta alternativa no fructifica, solo quedan ya dos salidas que no serán honrosas. La primera es el gobierno de la mentira y la segunda una repetición electoral. The second failed vote means King Felipe VI could put general election runner-up Pedro Sánchez in charge of forming a government. If there's no majority government by November the 27th, a new general election will be held in January. Spain's Congress of Deputies is elected by a form of proportional representation. Relief for more than 4 million Ukrainian refugees currently living in the EU. The European Council on Thursday agreed to extend the temporary protection status for refugees fleeing the war in Ukraine. This grants them the certainty that they will be allowed to stay in the bloc until March 2025 without the need to examine individual applications. The European Commissioner for Home Affairs says approximately 250,000 people per week cross the borders between Ukraine and the EU in both directions. It's been the fastest growing refugee crisis faced by Europe since World War II, and the EU has repeated that it will continue to support the people of Ukraine as long as it takes. The year-long extension will give Ukrainians living in the European Union more certainty as the war in their country drags on. Triggered days after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the temporary protection status gives them the right to residency and housing in European Union countries. It also means they're allowed to work, their children can attend school, and they can access medical and social welfare assistance. Temporary protection is an EU emergency mechanism which is activated in exceptional circumstances of mass influx and was first adopted in 2001. EU countries say they're very close to striking a deal on how to manage sudden massive arrivals of migrants in Europe. The so-called crisis regulation, as it's being called, allows member states to quickly admit people in need of international protection but also extends the deadlines to fast-track asylum applications. Not all countries are on board, though. And during the negotiations, Italy and Germany clashed about a reference to NGO vessels. But the Spanish EU presidency is still confident of reaching an agreement. Son questions de matiz que muchas veces tardan un poquito más 
de cerrarse y de conseguir ese acuerdo. Pero es una cuestión de los 27 y los 27 estoy convencido que en breve, en los próximos días, podremos eh, llegar a ese acuerdo total. This is the last missing piece to be agreed among member states when it comes to the EU's migration pact, which is the reform of migratory policy proposed by the European Commission in 2020. EU countries already agreed measures to change the asylum system, aimed at alleviating pressure on frontline member states like Italy and Greece. Once everything is eventually agreed, the Council will have to negotiate the entire migration pact with the European Parliament, where positions vary massively. One point being that some member states don't consider mandatory relocations among the EU countries a solution to a crisis situation. But the Parliament is insisting on this point. Yes, I know that there's reluctance, that there's resistance. But yes, the pro-European majority in the European Parliament has made it clear in our mandate for negotiation that we want, in situations of crisis, mandatory relocation programs which is the European scale of response in a situation as the one which is enduring now Lampedusa. The EU aims to reach an agreement on the migration pact before the end of the year. Individual member states won't have a right to veto it if they disagree, since the decision will be taken by a qualified majority of EU countries. Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson has vowed to defeat criminal gangs after a recent surge in violent attacks. His comments follow a series of explosions reportedly connected to a gang war. För vi ska jaga gängen och vi ska besegra gängen. Vi ska ställa dem inför domstol. I de svenska medborgare ska de låsas in på mycket långa fängelsestraff. I de utländska medborgare ska de dessutom utvisas. The centre-right politician slammed, quote, irresponsible immigration and failed integration. On Thursday, Christensen also said he had summoned the head of the military to discuss how the armed forces can help police deal with this unprecedented crime wave. On Monday and Tuesday, two powerful blasts ripped through residential buildings in the centre of the country, injuring at least three people, while three others were killed overnight Wednesday in separate attacks. Bombings and drive-by shootings have claimed dozens of lives in September alone. Two gangs, one led by a Swedish-Turkish dual national who lives in Turkey, the other by his former lieutenant, are reportedly involved in the feud over drugs and weapons. Sure is if being pragmatic and recognizing reality, um, as are other governments in the region which certainly you know have not historically liked the Taliban at all. Russia is hosting the Taliban for talks on counterterrorism and narcotics in Afghanistan. China, Pakistan, Uzbekistan and Iran are among the regional powers attending the gathering in Kazan, southwest Russia. This is the fifth edition of these meetings which first took place in 2017. This time round counterterrorism is top of the agenda. But Russia, the principal foreign policy challenge in the region, is stopping cross-border terrorism. And all the indications are that the Taliban have not uh, uh, stopped the, the insurgent groups who might want to cross the, the river and go into Central Asia. Since the Taliban came to power in August 2021, it has tried to crack down on Afghanistan's booming drug trade, but with limited success. Russia remains one of the key destinations for these drugs. You know, Russia does not have the money today, how much it might like to, and I think it probably would like to, um, to simply pay off the Taliban to suppress the heroin trade and to help the Taliban crush you know, the ISIS rebellion within uh, Afghanistan. But of course, uh, Russia is just not financially in a place to do that. What they're trying to do with the Taliban at the moment has a broader geopolitical um, sense to it in wanting to um, seek influence in places where, Af where America is now seen as, as very weak. Um, the Biden administration's withdrawal was a significant setback really for American policy in the region and Russia's trying to fill in the vacuum. However, there is still skepticism regarding whether stronger ties can be formed. Real thinking in the Taliban goes on in Kandahar in the south 
under Haibatullah Akhundzada, the Taliban's supreme leader, and he's not in the he's not in the room in these talks, um, and nor are the sort of ideological hard men around him, who are the people who are insisting that uh, girls' schools remain closed and that almost all um, employment opportunities are closed to women. The start to Gerland for seven aside rugby. Gymnast Madou Bonnet for basketball. Or the Sergei Voronsov Gymnasium for artistic gymnastics. These are three of the preparation centers in Lyon offered to the various National Olympic and Paralympic committees for the Paris 2024 Games. Designed for athletes, they're intended to serve as training facilities in France for foreign sports federations. Although most of the competition venues are in Paris, there are about 1,000 preparation centers scattered across France. In the city of Lyon, Gymnase Veronsov has already been chosen by a federation as its base. Pour la préparation des Jeux Olympiques, il y a le Japon qui, a, qui nous a sollicité pour venir se préparer au mois de juillet, juste avant, pour servir de base arrière, en gros, pour la préparation des Jeux. Quoi. Athletes like French gymnast Cyril Thomasson are in full preparation mode, further motivated by the fact that the Games will be held in France. Le fait de les avoir chez nous, voilà, me permet d'être euh, actif tous les jours à l'entraînement, d'être sérieux et, et de vouloir vraiment euh, aller faire une perf à Paris. For the moment, Cyril is waiting to hear if he's qualified to take part in the Games, allowing him to join the over 10,000 athletes expected in Paris next year.